curbs. Probably the bane of every electric skateboarder's existence. On a normal street board, you can easily ollie over it, no problem, and continue on your merry way. But what if you're not riding a street board? What if you're riding your boosted board or another electric skateboard and one of these suckers are in your way? What do you do then? You could be like everyone else and just avoid it altogether. You could pick up your board and get back on. Or you can use one of these three methods to get up a curb on your boosted board or any other electric skateboard. But first, we gotta start things off with a little unboxing. Or should I say, unbagging. So last weekend I went to the whole New York City creators pop-up, which was dope by the way. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check it out right here. And while there, my buddy Brett hooked it up. He's a fellow YouTuber, very talented man. Not only does he make videos, he also makes skateboards and he makes clothes. And real quickly today, we're gonna check out just what he hooked it up with. Starting things off with the long sleeve. Fortune NY. There's some money and some music notes on the sleeves and on the back. Coffee and skateboarding. This is awesome. He also blessed your board with some socks. Two pairs of fortune socks. We've got black and we've got red Chinese takeout boxes. This is awesome. Thanks, Brett. You know, I think I'll try this on now. Looking good. Feeling good. Not only are we gonna stay stoked today, but we're also gonna get out and get busy. <gasps> Yo, what is up guys? It is incredibly windy out today, so I hope you can hear me. So the problem with most electric skateboards is the fact that they're shaped like longboards. And most of the time, they don't have tails. So that makes ollieing up curbs or other obstacles pretty much impossible. So today I'm gonna try my best to show and teach you guys a couple of methods that you can use to get up those pesky curbs. Three of them, I'm gonna show you three of them. <laughs> so method number one is probably the easiest, slowest, it might even be the worst way to get up a curb. So what's happening here is I'm sort of teeter-tottering to get over the curb. When doing this, you wanna make sure that you're pretty slowed down, significantly, almost to a full stop. If you don't do that and you're going too fast, there's a chance that you could hit the curb, stop abruptly, fall, and die. So you wanna be going at it pretty slow and use that little nub of a tail of yours to kinda of get some leverage to get those front wheels over the curb. And when you do this, more often than not, you're gonna to come to a complete stop. When that happens, you do the same thing you did to the back, to the front, you use the leverage of the nose, lift those back wheels over, and vroom vroom, you're good to go over the curb. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of doing this method. It takes too long, and there's a chance you can mess up like your batteries and motors and stuff, everything, all that computer junk underneath the board, and all that stuff. Yeah, at that point, I think I'd rather just pick up my board. Method number two is the classic skateboard trick, the boneless. Boneless was the trick that all skaters were doing to get into the air, before ollies were invented. So it's only natural to try these out with these boards since we can't ollie them. There's a helicopter ruining this video right now. To do the boneless, you're gonna wanna approach the curb at a pretty moderate speed. To get up, you're gonna grab the middle of the deck with your hand and take your back foot off the board and take your front foot off the board and use it as like a spring to get up in the air. And after that, all you have to do is just try and stay centered over the board, land back on it very stably, and roll away. Now this is something that you're gonna wanna practice, get a lot of muscle memory doing the boneless, because once your body knows how to do it, you should be able to do it pretty much every single time. And you'll be able to actually practically use this to get up curbs. I suggest trying it out just on flat, doing a bunch of them, just really getting the hang of it. The third and final way is probably my favorite because to me, it just works like magic, and that's using the no comply. For this method, I recommend you actually do have some sort of kicktail because without a kicktail, it's really hard to get enough leverage to pop that front wheel up. It's not impossible, but a lot more difficult. Because the tail is just so small. You can lift up the wheels a little bit, it's just super difficult. 
When doing the no comply, you're gonna wanna be pretty comfortable riding skateboards in general. It's helpful to already know a couple of no complies, but I don't think it's needed. I don't know. When you're doing this, it's gonna be kinda like the boneless where you take your front foot off and plant it on the ground, but instead of using your hand to grab the board, you're kind of just using leverage of the tail to pop the board up. Your wheels are going to hit the curb and that's going to pop your wheels into the air and you're going to go over the curb. I wonder how many times I said curb in this video. First person to count all the times I said curb in this video, I'll pin your comment. So the forward momentum is actually going to keep you moving forward. It's going to bounce the wheels up and all you have to do is just land back on the middle of the board and ride away. If you're going to try and no comply your electric skateboard, I would recommend using a hub motor board and not a belt driven board like the boosted board. Just because since the belt is right there at the wheel, there is a chance that you could break your board. Actually, think about it now, there's a chance that all of these methods can break your board. <laughs> if you really think about it, these boards were not made for doing this. So don't do any of these. Now here is the super secret best way to get up a curb on your electric skateboard, and that's just use the freaking ramp. That is 100% so much easier than all of those methods. If you guys do want to try out the boneless or the no comply, I actually have a couple of trick tips on my channel teaching you how to do it on a long board which should be very similar and a lot more in depth than this video. So if you guys want to check that out, it's going to be right here. If you guys are going to try this out, make sure you get a lot of practice and get super comfortable on your board. Build that muscle memory so that way when it comes to actually using this when you're riding around, you should be able to do it every single time. Practice, practice, practice. I am very upset right now. So the other day I went regular skateboarding on my regular skateboard and now I can't find it anywhere. I literally searched anywhere where it could possibly be. My car, the apartment, other people's cars. I can't find my skateboard. I think I might have left it at the last spot that I was at. Super bummed about it. I really wanted to skate today. I really wanted to work on a couple of tricks. To the kid who found my board, I hope you're at least enjoying it. So I may not be able to regular skateboard today, but I still had this in my car. forgot how fun longboarding could be. It's been a while since I rode my longboard, since I've been riding my other skateboard and my electric skateboards. I forgot this thing is awesome. Even though my regular skateboard is gone, I am still super stoked to be skating, at least in some sort of way. Also, I just got off a call with a humongous YouTuber in the area. He was giving me advice, teaching me how things work. <sighs> The internet is such a beautiful place, guys. I am super stoked to be creating on this platform. All right, so two quick things before this video ends. Number one, the status of my electric skateboard. A lot of you guys have been asking me in the comments and via messages on Instagram, when will my electric skateboard be up for sale? And the thing about that is there's still a couple of kinks that we're working out on the board. A couple of technical things with the ESC and the motor. I really just want to get this thing perfect before sending it out to you. I did, however, decide to make one pretty big change with the board. Now, one change is the size instead of it being the 36 inch size board. It's gonna be closer to about the size of a regular skateboard around the same shape. It's gonna be sick. I love it. I'll have a prototype here soon and you guys will definitely be the first to see it. But as for the date of when it'll be released, we're aiming for the beginning of May. So it should be very soon. And the second thing before this video ends is the Tagalog slash Filipino word of the day, Salama. And that means Thank you. Thank you to you guys who support me by watching these videos, you know, buying the merch link down below. <laughs> but seriously, I really appreciate you guys watching this video, taking the time out of your day. I'm just super thankful to you guys for helping a guy make his YouTube dreams come true. And I just wanted to take a minute to say, 
Salama to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up because thumbs ups are always appreciated. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and definitely hit that notification bell to be a part of the Stoke Squad because YouTube makes you want to subscribe twice in order to see these videos. Anyways, guys, until next time, stay stoked them out. Peace. Ah. I'm gonna try, but.